<laughs> oh, well, thank you for having me. It's like a cutaway point. <laughs> it's recording, right? No! <laughs> Because I'm all this that can be the blooper. <laughs> everyone to the latest edition of Tatla Talks. I'm Eliza Kamil and here with me is the lovely Nini Marini who hey. is our March cover star. How are you? I'm well, thank you very much. <laughs> you look much. amazing as thank always. Thank you, thank you. I thought I'd dress up for you. Yes, thank you. Although I'm in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this? Not all the, the time. Studio. It's usually a, t a pair of t-shirts, pair of jeans and t-shirts. t-shirts. Yeah. Oh, how was, it? you look amazing on the cover of um, our March thank issue, you. Arts and Culture issue. I wasn't expecting it. I saw the cover and I was like, wow, you went for that shot. So I'm happy to be a part of that because apparently it's like a new sort of like layout for them as well. Yeah. So it's Yeah. Good choice. Amazing. Yeah, and that backdrop, I think about it all the time. I'm like, oh, it used to be on the floor. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, yeah, and a I did it together with um, another painter, Daniel, who was flying down and, and he wanted to understand how I painted, and so we did that piece together. Oh, wow. So it's kind of nice that I used it. And that became the backdrop yeah. of our Marsh cover. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have thought? How was the shoot? How was the entire experience? I loved it. You know, it's been such a while. Like, you know, it's been a while since. I've actually done any kind of shoot like this and to have everybody here in the studio yep. and to do it in my sort of playground, Space. my studio yeah. and having Paul come around and, and finding really beautiful angles is really cool, oh, dressing amazing. beautiful jewelry and then just dressing up in my studio and 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 seeing the results. I was yeah. like, wow, my studio looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> your, your space is beautiful. Thank you very course. much. I mean, this is the reason I got this space yeah. because you, uh, you're in the middle of the city. You come to this house studio set up yeah. and it's kind of calm. Yeah, it's so like, it's, I mean, lots of natural light, yeah. inspiring spaces, you know, I love it. And we have, you know, this cute little corner behind us as well. Yeah, it's my little sketches. This is yeah, not ready yet. It's not ready. Yeah. Not ready. <laughs> This is just the background how do you, of... How do you know when an art piece is ready, oh actually? Oh my god. Like, um, how do I know? I don't know. It's just when I feel like I just don't want to work on it anymore. That's okay. when I stop. Okay. Yeah. So there are there are paintings that have been with me for two years or three before I, I mean, no, I finally finished the one outside. I'll, I'll give you a tour, but sure. um, I finished one. It took me four years and wow. it morphed from having being a tree to something else. And every time I was in a different mood, you know, mm. so yeah. I guess that's, I mean, that's part of the process, right? Yeah, and, and for me, part of my process now is learning when to stop. Because if I if I go all the way, then it's going to be totally lined like this. You know, it'll be like lined everything because I love lining things. Oh, it looks so good and it's addictive. And right. I'm very I'm influenced by bate, so you know, and and animation. I, I used to want to be an animator, so there's a lot of that in my my painting, and I want to break out from that. So I think from last year onwards, I've learned to stop at a point. Because my art starts very free like this. Okay, yeah. And then it comes to a point when I start defining it. And now my challenge is to stop that definition. <laughs> okay. Because I always feel insecure. It, yeah, that it, people know it's not ready. But you go, right. wow, is it ready? So no, it's not ready. <laughs> And then it's a battle between, yeah. actually, it's just in my head. No I mean, one knows. An artist's perspective and then yeah. someone else's perspective. I exactly. Don't, I would say it's done. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, it's nowhere near done. It's level one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a fun one because I started it with just um, normal uh, leftover painting mm -hmm. and whatever. Uh, it's a game I play. So okay. whatever, when I, I paint on something else and I have a leftover painting. I don't want to throw it away, so sure. I put it on the canvas. Okay. And it sort of like builds from there. Yeah. Yeah. And and now gorgeous. we'll see. Oh god! <laughs> Please don't say gorgeous to my doodle sketch. I can't take it. I, it's better than anything I can do. In all honesty, you oh, should yeah. see my attempts. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> so okay, yeah. In the arts and culture um, issue, you know, we we talked a lot about um, the the state of the arts and culture scene in Malaysia. Mm. I think we just wanted to sort of expand a little bit on that, on your sure. thoughts and and how, you know, we can just sort of make people more aware on the importance of it in our society. More. Yeah. I think for me, the biggest thing and my biggest worry right now, especially uh, since we're going through such tough times, is that art is going to be the first thing that people forego. 
and it already is and it had and be, even before COVID started it was a subject that a lot of schools be turned into elective I was shocked mm. that a lot of like some of the government schools um, actually turned art into an elective subject and when it was actually a core subject when I was in primary school and I think it's so important because we go through all of the subjects and you need to be rounded human beings yeah. and a lot of people don't think art brings anything to the table yeah. whereas it is everything it it makes your mind whole it, it teaches your other part of your brain to exercise and 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 you think you're able to think abstract mm -hmm. and that is even more so important now when people are telling everybody go pivot go pivot go pivot and everybody's like yeah pivot 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 <laughs> and but then people like secretly don't know how to pivot yeah because they have never been able to think outside of their own constraints. Mm. Because thinking creatively and learning how to work in the area of gray area me means that you need to be a little bit more imaginative. That's why I believe in imagination. I always say imagination is necessary because it really is something that you need to cultivate and it's not something you wake up, oh, you're so imaginative, mm -hmm. right? No, it's something that you cultivate ever since you were young. I don't know about you, but when I was a young girl, I played a lot of make-believe by myself in my, yeah, my own room. I played <laughs> dolls, I, I made up a lot of stories and that freedom um, allowed me to be expressive and imaginative and I think that, that really helped me in life. Yeah. And it had to do with art. And I, was, I grew up in an art family, our artistic family back the house. Uh, I was encouraged to make art. Um, it was fantastic. Taken very seriously. Yeah. Art was Good. very taken very seriously, mm -hmm. you know, if I there was a project in school, paper mache, my mother would go over and beyond to get all the materials necessary so that I can get the best paper mache ever to be done. Wow. I mean, if it's going to be starch, you have to make good starch <laughs> for you to make paper mache. <laughs> She's very supportive. Yeah. yeah, and let me tell you, it's a life skill. If you ran out of um, materials and to make art, you wouldn't know that you could actually make glue out of like flour, would you? I, I, I didn't know that, yes. <laughs> I know, I mean, and, and, and you can make a sculpture out of like found magazine and are, um, a little bit of water and starch and suddenly you can make like sculpture. Oh, yep. So it, and it's just how far do you want to take it yeah. and a lot of children nowadays don't have that sort of um, sense of adventure to mm. play and go around so I, I feel very strongly that art should be something that we focus on and keep in the country yeah. um, I think in 2019 I attended the World Art Summit mm. which was in Malaysia not a lot of people knew it's an international convention and the people in um, United Nations said that every country should at least put 10 percent of their budget into arts and this is something that yeah. it is important. important and hearing these leaders say that art is important it is a sign of culture for our country mm -hmm. it is a sign of a developed nation mm -hmm. um, it's so important for me for me at the time when I had just left my media life yeah. and turning and starting out in the art journey and I felt that that was so important for me to learn yeah. um, and, and to, to, to have it punctuated at the World Art Forum was yeah, that's nice a big, to say it was yeah. a big thing to say and, and 10% of your budget mm. of the country's budget to art that's amazing yeah 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 it really is yeah i mean what have we been given is that enough the I'm what blessed. Do you think? I'm going to say this. I'm thankful for the amount, whatever amount whatever. that's that's been given to us um, for the arts. Um, however, the art scene is huge, yeah. and it's not just visual arts. It's yeah. it's it's also the theater, music, theater, exactly. and everyone requires some amount of money to go yeah. in. Um, and so, even creating an animation is a lot of money compared to that of who is doing a theater production. Mm. So, if we are so I think what the idea of that particular budget is to give a little bit to everyone. Um, however, I wonder how far would that little bit go to develop an artist fully? Yeah. Uh, because it is enough to to get that person she to one level, mm -hmm. but to fully realize his or her artistic dream 
um, I'm not so sure. Mm. So I think we, I would love for it to have, we have more legs sure. and more, more um, areas in which they can, we can, they can invest in yeah. art. Um, I, I would hope that that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I certainly don't think. I mean, art is, especially in Malaysia, is very appreciated. You know, yeah. but often overlooked. Mm. And if you can't open up. You know, productions and do what they have to do. Mm. How are they going to make their living? Exactly. So, exactly. And the funding is. I feel like the funding is for an old world. Mm. Uh, when I say this, because as everybody, the culture of working from home. A lot of the artists are also professional mothers and fathers, so yeah. they do have to keep things going. Yeah. So oftentimes, um, uh, artists have many jobs. Mm. So the funding should help support that lifestyle. Mm. So if there is an artist that needs to have a studio in the house, the funding should be able to, to she or he should be able to apply so that they can have a great studio or great space in the house so that they can continue yeah. working. Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. Uh, instead of like, do a project, do an uh, exhibition at the end. Right. Da, 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 da. You know, mm. it's, it's just normal. Um, so I think as we say to the, con the country, the government says pivot. Okay, so how are you pivoting you, uh, your ways of funding us? I throw it back to you. Yeah. You know, and how are you telling us now? Uh, because there's a huge thing like digital is in, mm. fintech, everything. So put all the money into that yes, one, right? Yeah. So what happens to the rest of the creative exactly. people? Exactly. So then, and, other and creatives. Yeah, <laughs> and the other creatives. And there's also another thing, not just art, it's happening in other, other industries as well. Yeah. I know lawyers who have downsized and they have to upskill themselves and go somewhere else yeah. and they've had to be creative yeah. and thinking. Mm. And, and you know, it would be really cool for them at this point to have an imaginative tool within so yes. that they can pivot and, and reshape their business. Yeah. Yeah, pivoting is huge, and yeah. I think it's a it's a big thing, and it's a daunting situation. Well, and I am lucky because I came from a corporate background, so having to change my my way around and thinking um, with that sort of structural background is is, is important. Mm -hmm. So I think having a, that type of education in uh, creative people is also just as equally important yeah. as we support art. You know, yeah. Nini. So what other projects are you working on now? Um, I don't know. Things have really moved for me during COVID mm -hmm. um, uh, at first I was a bit stuck so I'll, I'll start from there okay. so I was a bit stuck and I started weaving at home and I learned how to Keep weave I, I wasn't in the studio Ooh. so I didn't have any of my materials here so I started learning how to weave with t-shirts Right. And my adventure had led me to so many things. Being a part, eventually the Airbnb uh, partnership happened, where Ooh. I was the first online experience um, teacher wow, teaching weaving with teachers. Yeah, so I think that's that's a big plus for me last year, yeah. uh, and that had happened entirely in the first lockdown. And since then, I've been doing a lot of experimental work, and and the weaving has not stopped. I weaved rabbits and and all of that. Amazing. And on top of that. Um, we started recording um, right out of my, right after my wedding. Mm -hmm. um, I recorded my first television show. Ooh. Yeah, and it's an art show so that was created around my 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 dreams. Okay. So it was like it was for it was a format formatted that was developed around me, okay. and I was just so blessed. And it's not even a Malaysian television show; it's a it's an international Whoa. television show. And uh, we have finally finished one episode, okay. and uh, they have approved it. I can't say the name yet, <laughs> but it's an international um, oh, uh, broadcaster, and uh, they had just approved episode one, and we shot everything in Malaysia. And so Fantastic. the next stop. Is Singapore, so it's supposed to be, and it's not only that. It's a it's a six part series, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be in international. So you, I would travel to different countries, and it all stemmed with my whole um, desire to go and travel and see the world and see what kind of patterns and textures I can take. Mm. And that conversation led me to have this TV show. show. Wow, and it's a great TV show, and it's a great experience. Oh, it's my first 
attempt at being in front of the camera. I've been behind the camera all this time, sure. yeah. and so uh, and so hosting, you're actually hosting it. Wow. And, and yeah. yeah, it was. It's quite a cerebral experience. Ooh. Really cool. Yeah, I'm so happy for that one. Oh yes. So yeah. you would be able to travel during this time with, or are things kind of? We will see. So okay. Singapore is the next country, <laughs> okay. and so we will see. Um, yeah, hopefully we don't have to do um, the the quarantine stuff. I think sure. that's the biggest thing to yeah. quarantine a crew of 14. Yeah. It's a huge crew. Um, that's going to be the big thing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So in the meantime, I'll concentrate on my other projects. Yes. Um, this year, I have um, I did a sale, so I sold everything, um, <laughs> just so that I can have I free up this studio space. Mm -hmm. And uh, my intention really is to start having more meaningful workshops here. So I want to facilitate um, painting sessions for women who feel like they want to. Um, not just women, like, but the, the, a lot of women have asked me for that, yeah. <laughs> some two-hour free time. So oh, you know, I do great. like these painting parties for them here. Yeah. It, painting parties, painting yes. parties. That's what you should and, call it. Yeah, it is. It's a yeah. painting party, and then I will also do more workshops. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to do more natural dye workshops and concentrate uh, concentrate on eco fashion. Um, so that will happen on the ground floor. I started with yes. indigo dyeing, and hopefully, I want to try other leaves like around my studio. Mm. You can at least have, have at least six different colors with all the leaves Ooh, yeah wow. so just just you know getting people involved sure, and stuff, yep. stuff like that yep. and then teaching children yeah a lot of parents want me to teach their child that's great i'm a bit i'm scared you know it's like <laughs> children it's not i'm not scared of children but they're the biggest critique oh so I get a lot of pressure. Like I feel I pressure myself, oh. but I, I want to impress them so much. Oh. It's, it's so um, yeah, but they're so. I mean, kids are so impressionable. I'm sure they'll be. Oh, you know there are like like at four years old or five years old. I'll be like, do you want to do tie dye? And they'll be like, maybe. <laughs> And I'm mm -hmm. like, I have to find creative ways of sure. engaging them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So making yes. them think it's cool. Yeah. And, well, it is cool. Yeah, so as I'm thinking, so that's the hugest thing for me is like pivoting away and going into education. Yeah. Because um, that was always been my dream to go into art education and yeah. and for me now it's a little bit more defined where my role here is to express and inspire maybe and tell people that art is something that you can actually educate yourself with, mm -hmm. you know, and you can practice yourself. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage more of that. Not so much like you have to pay for my classes, but I want to give you ways in which you can. Yeah. Um, and uh, while that all happens, I will con concentrate on my surface path and design work, which is a new thing for me. Okay. Um, really, so uh, these are all painted, my paintings turned into fashion. <gasps> but what I want to do in the future is to really create patterns sure. um, based yep. on whatever so it's really intentional so mm. I'm doing fabric textile design surface pattern design yeah. and and that's my biggest and thing this is something completely new for you as um, well or it, it is a work in progress because I'm teaching under the tutelage of my mother yeah. I'm uh -huh. under the tutelage of my mother and it's been years um, and learning with her is, is an adventure in it half oh. um, but she will teach me how to do it properly the traditional way mm. with, without computers <laughs> okay, and then yes. I will cut out all of the <laughs> unnecessary steps yeah. and turn it into That's an efficient cooler. step. Yeah. But oh. I'm learning now. Which yeah. is fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to go into fabrics. Fabrics. Just yeah. fabrics. I don't not so much fashion, but fabrics. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll so see. that's just textiles. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. That, what I found in Malaysia is like a, that went really well. My mm. sale. I, yeah. I decided to sell a couple of just like loose pieces, and that went. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my <that> work. <laughs> just have to cut it out. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm maybe definitely so obsessed. Yeah, that. that's that's good. Wow, yeah. you really dabble in a lot of things. I'm well, it's not that productive during lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's because I've been so pent up, like, you know, sure. before that I was working in media for so long, right? Mm. And I had all these plans of what I wanted to do. Then when I left, um, I had a Gantt chart and, and all of that. Nothing came to fruition, you know? So yeah. I had to start from st scratch and I have all these projects that I want to create. Yeah. Before, I don't know, I feel like there's a bomb, time bomb here. Yeah. So I just, I feel like I'm a, I just want like, to do it. Just, yeah. do, 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 yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. I mean, so inspiring to be honest. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to come for your 
painting parties. Yes. yes. <laughs> I need some real artistic help. <laughs> oh man, and the painting party is really fun. Uh, it's stuff like, okay, what do you want to do? I'll say that mm. to you. I'm like, I don't know, I want to do, and then they'll show me a photo. I'm like, oh, this is Jackson Pollock's work, you know, and then teach them how to do abstract stuff. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. one example. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, teaching them how to do splats. Mm. And actually doing splats is really daunting for some people on the canvas. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because they're like, it's messy or it's they don't know. Did, so. They didn't know that they can do it. You know what I mean? Like at the act of like putting, yeah, like dropping. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. So for me having that, it's it's an eye-opening yeah. experience. Because yeah. you now know how constrained people are. Yeah, that's so and true. And they're not right? super adventurous and try mm. different things. So that's part of what I do. I want to unlock your creativity mm. and your inner art. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There are no rules things. when, like there are no rules there in art, no right? Rules. So it's I, like let loose, because do whatever Because that's how you I learn art. I learn art by just making things stuff up mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. nearly swore that yeah. <laughs> I'm making stuff up so you know it's like my mom would give me a brush and just here and I'm like wow this burros is like a huge brush like this yeah. what do I do with this explore <laughs> this is what she would say yeah. and I would be like okay oh. you know and I end up cutting it or yeah. turning it into something it's yeah. just having a parent like that yeah. is so useful oh. because it just it, me, it means she's that she's given herself. me a permission to be free sure. right? yeah. and, and as a child that's so important that is actually very yeah, important it's that you sure. are able to paint the wall Mm. Because you know you're gonna okay, paint I it back. Be able to do that. My oh mom no, would not let me do that. But that's great. Exactly. Yes, I could yes. paint anything. I could sure. paint all the walls, and I painted everyone's shoes. Everyone's like I went yeah. into this huge phase of painting glass, and I painted everything in the house. <laughs> and mom loved it. Aww, so I, I think that's that. important. That yeah. is fantastic. Patience for artistic people. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, okay, I mean, stemming off that, yeah. like, what are your thoughts with with you know, so artistic children who who maybe unfortunately don't have that same freedom. support and freedom. Mm. You know, what what advice or what do you think that that problem stems from? Is that like a sy systematic problem, yeah. a cultural yeah. issue? I, I don't know. A bit of everything. Yeah. Right. Like the system requires you to to be a and everything so mm. that you can go into streams yeah so that's it that's, that's true yeah. so that requirement then tells the parent that you must only do this strategically yeah. so yeah. that you can do a so that you can get good job yeah right yeah. so that's a system problem yeah. cultural problem is then there's also a perception that art is a for for flu flu people you know <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah you know flutter about but let me tell you this of course, I was a huge theatre girl, I was an artistic girl in mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. I had my moments, I just had this chat with my girlfriend and said how dramatic I was in school. However, and I graduated art, but I had a stellar, and I'm not going to lie about this, I had a stellar professional career in media, in broadcast corporate. Yeah, yeah. And I was a complete art student. Yeah. Like the things that went through my mind in some of the board meetings, you would never want to know. <laughs> because I'll be like, what are they talking about really? <laughs> They'll just wing it, right? But you know, I was I was I I thrived and I feel like I thrived in it because I was so happy because mm. I had an outlet that I could make art on the side. Yeah. And I think that really fueled me to be as creative and yes. and out of the box as possible. Mm. And I stood out in that environment. In production, yeah, for sure. Because I I could tell them, okay, if you don't know how to do that, maybe you can do it this way, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. like give them solutions. So I became very fast the ideas person in yeah. that establishment. Yeah. So I don't know, to, to the person, and I had a lot of people, a lot of parents reaching out to me because I had like this IG chat about Creative 2021 and how you should be more creative. And a lot of parents came and, and private messaged me and said, I have a creative um, a child, uh, but I want her to do accounting. Okay. But I want her to be artistic too. So okay. she's conflicted. Right. So right. you asked me just yeah, now. System. Yeah, I yeah. think system dictates yes, that. Yeah. She because practicality, yeah. like accounts, accounts. At least she's got something to sure, show back exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people choose that. And I have nothing against that. Mm -hmm. As long as you're feeding that artistic just side. Yeah. yeah, yeah just yeah, as long true. as you put, give them art materials mm -hmm. or give them a good, great class. 
Uh, and art is not constricting. In fact, you are able to expand more and do more. You'd be surprised about the amount of things you can do. Mm -hmm. I had a full-time job, but I also kept the studio while I was working a huge demanding like role, right? And I would paint every day after school, after school, <laughs> after work, and then on the weekends. It takes a bit of discipline, but I was working really at maximum capacity. Yeah. And I feel like we humans are able to take on more things, especially with art. Art yeah. actually relaxes your brain. Mm. Science has shown. So I think, yeah, make sure that you have time to make more art. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My advice. Yeah. Love that. Ooh. And you can make art from anything in the kitchen. Okay. True. Yes. Flour and food dye. Yeah. Food dye. Okay, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I'll get to that then. Yeah. I have right. a few tricks. So congratulations <laughs> okay. on getting married, by the way. It's Thank been you. a while I haven't seen you, so I'm not wearing the ring though. <laughs> <laughs> How how is that? You guys got married in lockdown, I believe. Yes. Okay. We were originally supposed to be married in March, mm -hmm. um, and then it we it wasn't even March. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know it was so long, and then it was lockdown and yeah. all that, right? Yeah. So and then it got pushed, 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 and then finally, I think in the after the first huge lockdown, mm -hmm. um, we heard we got wind that we were able to get married, mm -hmm. and then Joe and I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah. Because we, our original plan was a huge wedding. It was, it was yeah. a, what, a scary one for me personally, yeah. and because I always wanted a small wedding. Mm -hmm. And when lockdown happened, and Joe said that to me, and I was like, oh my god! And my and and then we got the the family's blessing, and we had it at our home, um, and it was just perfect, you know, because it was just the way I wanted yeah, it to be. Yeah, you managed to get it the way. You yes, know. and and it was really. I actually said in the, one of the first committee meetings, I said, oh, I would really love it if it was like a rolling thing. So uh, we. Would with Nika in the morning and then people come in like Hari Raya like and so then oh, like an open house, open house yeah, yeah. So that we can, and they all have a backdrop at the band and that's exactly what oh, happened that's so and, great. And, and I think it was so beautiful. And, beautiful and I've always believed that Nika is the most important aspect of the wedding yeah. and to have it done I, I had my fabric was made by the queen oh. you know the stories that came out was just like beautiful you yeah. know and every single thing I had wow. this huge I had like a tray of oils for Jo mm. uh, instead of perfumes yeah and then I wanted an ocean even but mom's like Nini that's too much where would you get the fog my mother <laughs> where, how would you get the mist on the tray I was like mom I wasn't thinking that abstract but okay <laughs> but um, it. it was a beautiful wedding yeah. and marriage life has been good for me I that's um, so great too. It's been interesting. I mean, it's Joe. Joe, Joe is an artistic person as well. Yeah. I'm artistic, so at some point, we two artistic people can go poof, explosive. <laughs> but we, we, and he gets me, and I get him, and it's time mm -hmm. to work. When it's time to go to the studio, he doesn't question it. Yeah. So where are you going today? Studio. Okay. He yeah. knows that I have to do my thing. Yeah. So I love that, and. Um, and I'm very happy that, not happy, but how it's happened is COVID. He had so many world tours, mm. world, world tours scheduled, but because of um, COVID, everything got pushed back. Sure. So I had this time with him. Yeah, and you so, guys get to actually enjoy your yeah, married time. Too. Yeah, and it's been like super 100% like 90 degrees <laughs> whatever it is it's like to learn to live with another human being yeah, you know it's like yeah. that that's the biggest thing for me yeah so. oh yeah. i'm so happy yeah. to hear that so it's nice i i loved my wedding yeah perfect perfect yay yeah. that's great <laughs> Mimi, thank you so much for joining us on tatler talks it's been such a pleasure it has being been in your space okay. talking to you thank you so much <laughs> I've, it's been such a pleasure i had a lovely time talking thank to you, you. Thank you.